Mr. Speaker. I call Golras Garama. <laughs> um, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of this bill, and um, as previous speakers have uh, laid out quite uh, aptly, it, it has three components. Uh, the first, um, and probably to the public most shocking, being the year and a day rule, uh, whereby our law prescribes the time limit or a statute of limitations, as it's commonly known, um, for acts that have caused death uh, to be prosecuted within a year and a day of that act having been committed. Um, now, this kind of limitation is normally um, put in place to protect the fairness of proceedings. Um, it, it is true that after, a, after many, many years, proceedings can no longer be fair, especially in very serious criminal trials. Um, witnesses can pass away over time, memories fade, um, and, and, and it's no longer to defend cases properly. There's also, in terms of natural justice, a, a, an expectation that a person shouldn't be um, living with the stress of, of serious criminal charges hanging over them without certainty. Um, having said that, this arbitrary time limitation does seem particularly short, <laughs> um, especially in light of uh, sort of advent of DNA uh, evidence and, and other modern technological advances that preserve evidence and also uh, mean that we can adequately investigate and prosecute crimes um, over, over years of time that we weren't able to do previously. Um, so what New Zealand obviously has, uh, as the Minister pointed out, experienced um, this, this limitation in the case of the Christchurch CTV building tragedy in which 115 lives were lost uh, during the Christchurch earthquake. Uh, the police investigation uh, took three years. We spent millions of dollars. The, there was a Royal Commission of Inquiry. And the police uh, team in charge of that investigation concluded that their case for criminal negligence was very clear. And even though that was the case, even though this could have been a case where negligence by uh, the building team, the company that had undertaken um, the, that building and the engineer himself could have been held criminally liable, which is actually very rare and, and would have been extraordinary um, in terms of bringing justice to those victims. Uh, the police had to abandon that case under legal advice uh, because of this provision. So the families were let down, but I would argue also a very important opportunity was lost for New Zealand to hold to account those who put profits um, and expediency of their access to those profits ahead of safety and, in fact, risk lives. Um, we know that bringing a civil case against a company in those circumstances will only uh, result in a monetary fine or compensation, and we know that that can be circumvented through um, declaration of bankruptcy or, um, or, or indeed even, even if payment is made, it's only made by the company as a whole. Um, criminal charges in that case would have held individuals to account, the individuals who made those decisions, um, who were responsible for the negligence that resulted in death. And we could have had precedent case whereby um, those types of uh, sort of reckless behaviours for profit could be deterred in future. Um, but that opportunity was lost, and I would argue, um, you know, putting form before function uh, the law didn't work very effectively in that case, and, and so I am very happy that we're going to be repealing that provision and that something like that can't happen again. The second aspect of, of this um, bill is, is again, an, a very um, arbitrary line drawn in the sand in our criminal justice system, whereby uh, immunity is given to spouses or uh, civil partners uh, for becoming accessories after the fact to a crime. Now, it is a very important function of our system of justice that the police can prosecute those who assist um, in perverting the course of justice after a crime has happened or assisting uh, the principal in, in essentially getting away with, with a crime. And, and to say that 
a special kind of relationship arises in marriage or civil partnership uh, whereby the police can no longer hold someone to account um, and those circumstances does seem perverse and contrary to, to the uh, intention of having accessory after the fact it, it, on our law books at all. It, it is almost always going to be someone um, in some kind of close relationship with the principal offender that commits a crime like that, um, helps them to cover up um, their actions or helps them to get away or helps them to pervert the course of justice. So, so it, is, um, it is a strange anomaly again um, that I'm glad we're doing away with um, to bring consistency and effectiveness to our criminal justice system. The third aspect to this bill is something that uh, the Green Party wholeheartedly supports. And I do want to congratulate warmly my friend and Labour Party colleague, Angie Warren-Clark, for bringing that member's bill, which was now taken up by this uh, government bill and will pass. Bringing our laws in line with the, uh, <laughs> with the very secular uh, open society that New Zealand is in the 21st century. I was actually quite surprised that that, that uh, blasphemous libel remained on our criminal uh, books, <laughs> to be honest. It does seem medieval, uh, and, and of course it hasn't been prosecuted since 1922. Um, the churches and church community who it was supposed to protect no longer agree that it should remain um, on the books. And in fact, um, our former colleague, uh, the Right Honourable Bill English, um, a devout Catholic, supported uh, this crime being removed for, from the books. Um, so it's no longer really um, consistent with New Zealand culture and our values. Um, and, it, it, and it did remind me when I thought about this that you know, my family and I did live under a different criminal justice system where something like blasphemy was still a crime and could be used um, in a reverse way to persecute um, people in a very wide range of circumstances um, in, in a way that, that actually limited their rights uh, to freedom of speech, to freedom of religion, or to freedom to be free from religion, um, which is also an important right that we do want to uphold in New Zealand. So I'm very happy that in, in all three of these um, amendments to our Crimes Act, we're going to be bringing New Zealand into the 21st century. We're future-proofing our laws, um, and we're bringing a special level of consistency that was really lacking from our criminal justice system. So I commend the bill to the House. I call Chris Bishop. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker.